Hey everybody, welcome to Trading Capital's exclusive analysis of all the S&P 500 sectors. In today's analysis, we're going to be touching base on technology, the first sector. Overall, the technology sector has had a whopping three-week rally, closing back above the key 100 weekly moving average. That, technically speaking, is bullish. However, we're at a very critical inflection point, just being the fact that we're under this massive key resistance trend line. We're actually bubbling up right into it. That's your COVID trend. And that was the trend that was formed basically when the Fed had interest rates at zero and they were pumping all of this excess QE into the system. You can clearly see the trend was basically broken when you had a sharp sell off into this trend, a bounce, and then a big collapse below that trend. Now, the market makers have tried recapturing this trend once, twice, and now the third time. And you actually did get a weekly close back above that trend line. So the big question is now, can tech get continued follow through to really capture this trend on a weekly basis to the upside? If you're a long term investor, that would be a beautiful buy signal to see. However, there's a lot of moving aspects to this market and we can't just rely on one specific sector being the fact that it is so concentrated with the mega caps. And when you look at the overall sector views, Technology has been the number one sector uh, year to date. It's up over 21.35%. And it's certainly a lot of aspects of money flow has flown into technology, being the fact that these mega cap uh, stocks are acting as safe havens when we've experienced more of these banking crisis and liquidity crisis issues. Now, my members know how I feel, but overall, you have to really see, are we going to get through this double top scenario here and through this massive, massive trend line from going back to your COVID trend? That's the big test for this XLK ETF. Now, a little bit of an insider tip that I'm observing and noticing. Okay, so notice how we did have that huge volume spike, which was your massive green bar reversal candle engulfing this previous red candle. So that was bullish. But now your volume trends are starting to decline on a weekly basis, although you're still making a little bit of higher highs in this little micro trend. So the last time we saw the volume declining was this period over here, despite the markets were rallying up. Now we're into this double top scenario over here, which should act as good resistance and you're declining volume again. The last time the volume started to decline as you're we pushing up, look what resulted a bigger, bigger sell. I'm not saying that that's going to happen, but these are little nuances as longer term investors you have to be aware of. Now, in terms of how you can buy this particular sector, I specifically do not like to chase these sectors higher, when, especially when you factor in they've had one, two, three weeks of rallying to the upside without any consolidation off of this pattern. Yes, you did have a beautiful rally here, several weeks of consolidation looking like a bull flag breakout to the upside. But now you're at resistance and the markets need to consolidate. Preferably, if you got a retrace as a long investor, you could go long around this 100 weekly moving average around the 143, 144 level. And then you just have a very tight stop loss in the event that the markets see more selling. But needless to say, across a lot of the mega cap stocks, many of these stocks have had humongous rallies are into resistance. I mean, if you look at Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, those three stocks alone have been responsible for an exorbitant amount of the money that has flowed into the technology and overall NASDAQ and S&P 500 rally. So just be mindful that a lot of these stocks are trading at exceptional valuations, valuations that even supersedes the peak mania phase bubble that we saw in the markets in 2020 and 2021. So just be mindful that the markets, yes, can continue to go higher than a lot longer that for a lot longer than most people think. But when you put it in a technical picture that we're at resistance and then you back it up with the fundamental analysis of each and all these mega cap companies, these valuations are getting extreme and lofty, which is why I urge you caution to be buying and chasing this rally higher when likely in maybe a week or two, if you're wanting to go long this market, you likely could get a better entry just based off of a one or two week pullback in the markets. Now, let's jump into the XLV sector. Um, I'll just pull that ETF up. 
So XLV on a weekly basis, it is bullishly moving in a constructive form. Notice how you've had three nice solid moves, three weeks of a nice solid gain to the upside, and you actually got a weekly close above this wide range red bar breakdown. Now from an XLV standpoint, the trend is clear. You are still technically heading lower in this little micro trend, but it does favor a move to test the top of this range, just like you did it over here where you had, you know, the price action was kept on being defended, defended, defended. Considering you've recaptured this key channel, it's likely you push back up to the upper end of this range before technology sees a little bit more downside in my opinion. Notice how technology is way above the 100 weekly and healthcare just recaptured the 100 weekly. So definitely pay attention to this key moving average because it's going to be telling. If this starts to slope over, then it likely means the markets will head lower. But being the fact that technology, the heaviest weighted sector, and healthcare have moved off the lows significantly, it's definitely been part and parcel of the reason why we've had such a substantial rally in the markets. And in terms of healthcare's year-to-date performance, it is still down on the year 4.7, uh, minus 4.7%. In terms of its one-year performance, uh, its healthcare's one-year performance is down minus 6.39%, still bolstering the second largest weighting in the, in the S&P. Actually, it's not the second largest anymore. It's the third largest weighting in the S&P, uh, roughly about $7.57 trillion. So definitely healthcare is an interesting sector to pay attention to because it is typically more of the defensive uh, sector where capital rotates to when there's a little bit more risk in the markets. But definitely uh, this trend is still looking vulnerable. I have a long-term channel that I've been watching on healthcare connecting a major pivot breakdown in 2008, connecting a major breakout in 2013. You have your breakout here, retest, and then you had a soaring rally up into the high of the channel over here. And you've just been trading in the upper half of this channel for multi, multi years, really never breaking out of it until you had low, low rates at 0% in 2021 and this massive fiscal and monetary spending that took hold and you broke out of that channel. But notice how the price action is getting very choppy. This broadening formation at the highs is actually bearish on a technical basis. And considering you keep retesting this channel, breaking out of it, retesting again, breaking out of it, the resistance is clear. I would not be going long yet in healthcare. I still think there's going to be a washout low, at least to test this double bottom and likely even the lower end of this range. Maybe it'll coincide with the upper middle of this um, specific channel that we were trading in for a multi, multi year of time frame. All right, let's touch base on um, XLY now, which is the next sector to discuss. So XLY, the consumer discretionary has been acting well. Now we did get some data that the PCE actually upticks, so that's not going to be helpful for um, the inflation side and the inflation that the Fed looks at. Now, needless to say, this is on watch for a potential technical breakout. You can clearly see this downsloping trend line has been beat. Um, basically, if you get a follow through next week, you're likely going to test this high pivot over here. If you get a high pivot breakout from this area, your resistance will be this 100 weekly moving average. Considering this 100 weekly moving average is starting to slope down, I am still leaning more bearish on this XLY ETF, even though it is on the verge of this breakout. I would still be very, very cautious about buying this particular sector because it doesn't necessarily have to um, trend higher. And basically the long-term moving average is sloping down, which makes me a little bit skeptical. One specific pattern that I am watching here, you do have this inverse. You have your left shoulder, your head, your right shoulder. The right shoulder is a little bit of a small one, so it's not as powerful as I would usually like to see it. But this is going to be your key trend line break. If you break out of this neckline over here, then you could potentially play this pattern all the way up to 192 or 191. It would be around these pivots. So I am watching this inverse head and shoulders. It is only valid once you get a weekly close above this key neckline. And then it gets invalidated if you get a weekly close back below. So only really entertain this pattern until you get the confirmed signal break. And considering the markets have had a magnificent rally, it may need some time and consolidation to build up this right shoulder a little bit more. But that's generally what I'm paying attention to in the XLY ETF. In terms of the year-to-date performance, XLY 
has been the third best performing sector, up 15.78% in terms of its one year performance. Um, the consumer discretionary ETF is still down minus 21.97%. So it's still down a whopping, whopping amount if you take the full one year period of change going back March 31st of last year. So definitely be mindful that Yes, there's maybe an accumulation pattern that is unfolding, but only really entertain it once we get that official close above it. That's how I'm looking at this particular sector. All right, the next, the second best performing sector is communications. Communications has been a powerhouse. I think Meta has single-handedly been the stock that has been lifting the communications sector as a whole. This communications sector ETF is very, very... Um, skewed because Meta holds over a 20% weighting in this particular sector. And when you look at Meta's chart, Meta has just had a screaming rally off of the lows, but clearly into big, big resistance as well. You can clearly see on the chart of Meta here, 2015 pivot, 2020 pivot, you've had a, now a beautiful technical retrace back to the breakdown zone. Take a look at this 100 weekly moving average. It is also starting to slope down in bearish alignment. That is never a good thing. And if you throw in the 200, you can see we're almost at a very, very bearish cross that is occurring. Hasn't happened yet, but if you get these this 100 to intersect with the 200 in a downtrend, that is not going to bode well for the communications sector and specifically Meta's chart. Flipping back to the XLC, you can clearly see the XLC. Let me just adjust this trend line over here. The XLC is now approaching this basically this COVID trend where you had a big breakdown, a retrace rejection, held support. Now you're retracing back to this area again. So markets are at a big inflection point here. Being the fact that you've had a three week rally, I would certainly not be chasing this higher. I would wait for a little bit more of a bullish pattern to build if you're wanting to go along this specific sector. Now let's take a look at the XLF because the financials are ever so important and very, very interesting. Financials have had a beautiful bounce off of the weekly 200 moving average. So that is a short term positive. Now what I'm watching for are the financials going to be putting in a bearish pattern that likely sets it up for a move lower. Right now, there's nothing constructive on the bullish side about this chart other than your short term oversold. But that oversold nature has definitely been a little bit negated considering you've had a one and now a two week bounce to hold this major pivot low. I think that this based off of this bearish pattern over here, you can clearly see if I draw um, a little bit of a parallel channel from this over here, you're putting in this bear flag pattern, which argues on the precipice of breaking lower. I still have a downside target on the XLF to come all the way down to 2381 once we get a break of this bearish pattern. And I keep harping on the one specific moving average that makes me bearish on this particular sector and one, one of the moving averages that you have to really focus on from a bullish and bearish standpoint. When you're below the 100 weekly and that 100 weekly is sine curve is slowly starting to slope lower, you have to be very, very cautious indeed because once that momentum starts to turn to the downside, it usually signifies another leg lower for the financials. And that's certainly what I'm paying attention to. If we get more bearish price action in the financials, it could be meaning that the earnings for financials next week and the week after are going to be uh, awful. That's certainly one aspect. And it could also mean that there's another canary in the coal mine with maybe another regional bank uh, that could be blowing up and then which could cause a little bit of contagion in the uh, larger banks, the KBE and then the actual much, much larger banks like JPM, Bank of America City. So definitely pay attention to financials because they have certainly been weak this year. In terms of the financials year to date performance, XLF currently is right now is down minus 5.99%. It is the worst performing sector year to date. In terms of its one year annual performance, it is down 18%. So it's definitely still in bearish territory. Certainly not out of the woods yet for financials. There could be a lot more downside that comes to fruition in the financials. And even when you look at some of the big mega cap financial stocks that are trading, I mean, some of them are certainly looking bearish. I mean, they've had a significant bounce due to the market strength. But when you look at JPM, it's broken key support. You look at Wells Fargo, 
Wells Fargo is one of the ones that I'm extra, extra bearish on. This is a beautiful bear flag breakdown, trading below all of the key weekly moving averages. I mean, this chart is looking exceptionally weak. Then you go to Bank of America, having a bounce off of this breakout trend line, but also putting in potential bearish consolidation under all of the key moving average. These are massive, massive financial institutions. And then you look at Schwab. Schwab actually closed the week negative and the day on Friday negative, despite the markets having a rip roaring rally. Now Schwab does have a, a powerful reversal here on the weekly chart, but it doesn't mean it can't go lower. I actually have a downside target on Schwab of around $37, uh, $38, a pierce of 38 bucks. But you have to really factor in like, what is, what is going on with Schwab here? Are they gonna report horrific earnings? Are the net interest deposits going to really hurt banks to the degree where we see their earnings reports get slaughtered or their future projections get slaughtered? High rates, the inversion of the yield curve is why banks are in such, such trouble and why we need to pay close attention to them. Because if banks certainly start restricting liquidity in the form of tightening lending standards because they've been caught in this duration risk environment, that's where the economy will really start to slow. And you factor in that a large, a, a large portion of the growth in the economy over the last decade to 15 years has come from credit creation, these exorbitant amounts of loans. And if credit creation is starting to crumble and lending standards are tightening, which they have been before the actual banking collapse and crisis, that's not going to bode well for the economy. Credit is what keeps this economy going, it what keeps a robust GDP going. And without credit expansion and loans, if banks are tightening down on this, you're certainly are likely to see a more of a decline in the overall economy. Let's take a look at the industrials, XLI, because that's been more of a defensive sector. XLI has recaptured this key trend that it broke. And basically now you're just stuck in a little bit of a wedge pattern forming. So we can erase that trend line now since you are. The big resistance is clear to me. You have two levels, this down sloping trend line, which you tried busting through numerous times and you failed. Now it just looks to be you're retracing back to this area. That's going to be your first big resistance. The second big resistance is can you get a weekly close above this wide range red bar high, which is about the level of the high on that is 103.75. So if you can get a close above 103.75, you likely to test this double top and maybe just maybe you can actually break out. Industrials are still one of the more bullish sectors, reason being is they typically see a little bit more of a defensive flow in money. And then you also factor in it's trading above all of its longer term key moving average. So unlike the financials trading below its 100 weekly, this has recaptured the 100 weekly moving average to the upside. In terms of the XLI performance uh, year to date, it is up 3.02%. So it is still technically underperforming the S&P and the NASDAQ, um, but in terms of its one-year performance, industrials is down minus 3.13%. So really industrials haven't made a meaningful directional move one way or another. There's just been a big choppy range for industrials. And being the fact that you are chopping in such a big range where you had a consolidation, big breakdown, failed to take out and make a high, another big breakdown, another lower low in the trend. If you don't make a higher high, that's going to be a little bit bearish for this chart. So just be mindful that we are still trading near resistance on the industrials. You're inside of this weekly hammer and we'll just have to really see if you can close above this weekly wide range red bar for industrials. Let's move on to consumer staples. So the Walton family, Walmart has been selling exceptional amounts of stock in Walmart by the billions over the month of March. So we certainly have to be paying attention when large insiders are selling that specifically have such an important role in the consumer products that Walmart sells. I mean, you just have to pay attention and be a little bit skeptical. Why are they selling? Maybe there's a bad earnings report coming out. Maybe they see um, slower growth coming in the in in the economy in the near term. There could be a whole host of reasons, but selling typically is never good. And in terms of the XLP, the XLP has actually had a magnificent rally after breaking this key trend line over here. XLP is now recaptured. It looks like the XLP wants to move back up to this trend line to see if it can start breaking out. There's still clear resistance up ahead, and right now. I'll touch base on this pattern. You're just putting in a wedge pattern. This wedge pattern at the highs, although it technically is a little bit of a bullish wedge, 
being the fact that it is up at the highs, it does favor a move to break lower still. I still have a downside target calculated around the $65, $66 level on the XLP ETF. And when we look at some of the leading names in there, I mean, Walmart has had an epic rally back up to the highs. Uh, you look at Costco, that has had an epic rally back up to the highs, but still trading outside of this massive, massive wedge formation. And as far as I'm concerned, Costco broke this wedge and now it's just doing a retrace. Full disclosure, we are short Costco, but we'll just have to see what type of price action uh, it transpires. But nonetheless, XLP is above the key moving averages right now. But the big question is, will it stay above the moving averages? With all of the insiders selling at Walmart, that's a little bit of a red flag in my opinion. But needless to say, at the moment, it is bullish. I would wait for a constructive pullback if you're wanting to go along this particular sector. Uh, I would definitely wait for a pullback. In terms of its performance, XLP is year-to-date performance up 0.21%. So it is lagging the S&P 500. And then in terms of the one-year performance, uh, the uh, Consumer Staples ETF is down 1.82%. So clearly still a lagger. Could it catch up to the upside? It absolutely could. But realistically, this XLP has been lagging the overall market uh, this year and as of last year. So definitely pay attention to that. It is still technically weak despite it trading above all of the key moving averages. All right, let's take a look at utilities, XLU. So XLU basically got a weekly close back above that key 100 weekly moving average. That's a short term positive for XLU. I still have a downside target of around 61. However, it's now looking like you want to try to test and break out above this trend line. If you can get a weekly close above this key trend line, this down sloping trend line, then the next level that you would likely try to retrace to might be this high pivot over here, this little initial reversal that caused you to break down and close below this key trend line of resistance. So that's going to be your next big level on XLU if it does get a weekly close, a successful close above this key down sloping trend line. Now there is lots and lots of resistance up ahead that lies here for the utilities. But needless to say, it is trying to show some signs of strength and recapture key moving averages to the upside. So you have to respect that for the time being. In terms of its year-to-date performance, XLU is still lagging the market, the S&P 500. Uh, it is down for the year-to-date 3.99%. Over the last 365 days, the utilities are down 9.17%. So definitely this year alone, the utilities is still lagging the overall S&P 500. So whether or not we see continued weakness occur if the market see downside, since it is a lagging sector, it will also likely be hit to the downside if we see a market sell off or any market weakness. Let's jump onto the XLRE. So XLRE, you can see, this was one of the more bearish sectors that I was leaning on, but it has had a beautiful move to the upside. XLRE is benefiting from the markets get catching a bid on Friday and also last week. And then it is also catching a bid from the rates softening, at least what the bond market is pricing in. But needless to say, you're below the key moving averages, the two weekly 200, which is extremely bearish, and the weekly 100. Now, the only short-term positive in this trend is one thing. You could be putting in, here's your low, you could have a lower high. Now, you still have a high here, a higher low and a higher low and a higher low. So the main trend, considering you have four lower highs, is much more powerful than potentially the two higher lows that you're putting in. So the overall trend in this sector is still down, clearly by the being the fact that you're trading under all the key moving average. I still remain bearish on the sector. The big level I'm watching for, can you get a weekly close above this high pivot over here? If you can, your next resistance will be trying to recapture this wedge pattern. We discussed this wedge pattern in length. Basically, you can see your COVID trend over here, your consolidation breakdown. Market makers do like to retrace back to the breakdown zone. So if you get a uh, close above this weekly red bar high, then you could retrace back to this upper end of this trend over here. But needless to say, you have broken the wedge and that is a technical bearish break to the downside. So I still remain bearish, being the fact that the S&P has had a magnificent rally um, obviously, this was one of the sectors that caught a bid from just a strong market. In terms of the year-to-date performance, the XLRE is also lagging 
the overall market, the S&P 500, it is only up 1.22% this year. In terms of its one year performance, real estate is down 23.28%. It is the worst performing sector over a one year period dating March of last year to March of this year. So just keep that in mind that typically the worst performing sectors do catch big market bids when the market's strong. But again, if there's any fundamental breakdown in the market, the weak performing sector should get taken to the woodshed and slaughtered. Okay, just keep that in mind. And this is all under the the guise of interest rates falling sharply lower and the market and this sector has still taken a hit to the downside. Imagine if yields start to increase back up to the upside, if inflation rears its ugly head, imagine what would happen to this particular sector then. So there's a lot to pay attention to in real estate, being the fact that it is the worst performing sector, definitely keep a close eye on it because it is super, super sensitive to the interest rate environment. Let's take a look at XLB. So the materials sector, once again, a big, big rally trying to recapture a lot of the gains it's lost. Short-term positive for the bulls, you recaptured the 100 weekly moving average. Now, this weekly 100 moving average is on the verge of also starting to slope lower. So you really need to see, if you're a bull in the, in the material sector, you really need to see you hold above this weekly 100 moving average for a sustained duration of time to really start to negate that sign curvature slope to the downside. Clear resistance points lie ahead for the XLB. Your first resistance is this neckline break, which has acted as resistance for multi, multi, multi array of weeks. And then your second resistance is this down sloping trend line. Really, that's as simple as it gets for the XLB. It's uh, in terms of its year to date performance, the XLB is currently up 3.84%. So also lagging the S&P 500 this year. And then in terms of its one year performance, um, XLB, so the materials is only down 9.46%. So again, there are a lot of the common themes is that there's a hand, the majority of the sectors are continuing to lag the market, the S&P 500, which just means that the concentration of money flow is really evident into a handful of sectors, which usually isn't signifying the start of a bull market. Now let's touch base on the final energy ETF here, XLE. XLE has been under pressure as of late because oil broke a key resistance or a key support trend line. Now in the recent sessions, oil has had a beautiful, beautiful bounce, as you can see on this US oil chart, which I'll pull up. So obviously the energy sector is most um, affected by the price action in oil. You can see oil came right into the weekly 200, has had a two week bounce. It likely could push up and test maybe 79 bucks, especially since uh, the energy side got a huge announcement from OPEC. Uh, basically today announcing that they're cutting a whole host of oil production roughly between all of the nations It's a cut of 1.6 million barrels a day. That's a big cut in the short term that should boost oil However long term why are they cutting likely they're seeing a macroeconomic driven event that is going to substantially curb demand and if they're cutting oil this aggressively there's a couple things why they could be cutting to really stick it to the US and North America and the allied nations ahead of their major driving seasons, or they could also be seeing some the economic data deteriorate even faster. I'm kind of leaning towards both outcomes, but I think it's really due to the fact that the economic conditions are going to deteriorate over the coming quarter. So I think they're just trying to get a jump start and put a little bit of a floor under the price action of oil. Now, needless to say, with that cut, it likely means oil should get a retrace. If the energy sector gets a retrace, there's a couple key levels I'm watching. Basically, if the energy sector gets a retrace into this vicinity here, I'm going to be looking to pull off some short trades with my members. Full disclosure, we're not shorting energy right now, but I've been patient. And with this announcement, I'm glad I didn't load up on the energy shorts because I was very close to on Friday. But if the energy sector gets a bounce on, on in the following week, into this key resistance, I will be shorting a couple key names. I'm very selective which with, one, with which stocks I will short, but I do have my short list ready and waiting to be pulled the trigger. So in terms of the XLE performance, XLE performance in terms of year-to-date performance is minus 5.3%. It is the second worst performing sector year-to-date, clearly lagging the S&P 500. In terms of its one-year performance, however, it is still 
the best outperforming sector out of all of the S&P 500 sectors. In terms of its one year March to March performance, it is still up 7.58% when the S&P 500 is roughly down 10.7. So clearly still outperforming, clearly still a place a lot of money is trying to hide, even though its weighting is very, very minuscule in the grand scheme of the market. Clearly investors are still remaining bullish on this market. And let's just keep in mind, one thing on a technical standpoint is this was your major breakdown in the energy sector. We've really never ever closed above that on a weekly basis. So all of this chop inside this is still technically bearish inside bar price action, which is why you're likely going to see more downside in the energy market, which is why you broke down from this massive, massive wedge pattern that we were discussing with our members for quite a long time. So energy is certainly interesting. Uh, keep in mind that that OPEC announcement just came in, so it's likely going to add some buying pressure to the energy markets. But I do think that that is just more of a proactive measure for a little bit of a economic deterioration that is going to come later in this quarter and the following months and weeks to come. So on that note, to sum things up, out of the 11 S&P 500 sectors, the S&P is roughly up about 7% this year. And in terms of the sectors lagging, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight sectors are lagging the S&P 500. There's only three out of the 11 sectors that are outperforming the S&P 500, which is all based around mainly technology and communications. So when you have the majority of the sectors lagging the S&P 500, that is not healthy for the overall breadth in the market. And that is never a good thing to see when so much of the concentrated money flow has been flowing into technology and has been flowing into the communication sector. Because if those specific sectors start to see downside when the majority of the market is already lagging the S&P, that opens yourself up to a big, big decline, a very, very um, relative weak decline that could transpire, specifically if you do get some exhaustion in the technology and communication ETFs. On that note, a lot of mixed signals across this market. It is a very, very tricky landscape. If you're an investor or a trader, the market's conditions still favor a trader's environment by just being nimble in and out, not being overly greedy. But on this note, I'm going to end this video and just urge investors to be cautious and traders to keep being nimble because this is still a very volatile environment. It is still a news headline it's still a headline driven news based market that causes the markets to pop and drop based off of harsh economic data or, or negative comments from uh, important players in the overall market. So lots of tricky landmines to continue to avoid. But when majority of the sectors are showing you negative price action, just take that into account when you're building your long positions. On that note, thank you all for tuning in. 